So the corners, the edges, and the middles. My task was to lecturing design. I have several students, and for them, it's a very important thing to understand structuring forms and space. And I was looking for interesting examples because I believe it's more and more important to learn in activities, not just to memorize things. So the cube is one solid, but it contains several pieces. One is the middle pieces, which are on 90 degrees axis. There are 12 edges and eight corners because there are eight corners of the cube because of the coding and the freedom of the movement, it's practically infinite number of possibilities, but it's not infinite because you can count, so it's, but it's more than 43 quintillions. Interestingly, after 30 years of research and discoveries, it's proved already that only 20 moves is needed, but there is no one solution. There are methods to find solutions. If your task is to do it fast, not the shortest solution is the best. What is needed is a very good sense for pattern recognition and naturally they need very fast hands. It started to compete with each other uh, in speed and in time, measuring time, and it became extreme sport type of thing. You can do it one-handed, you can do it with feet, and, and many, many other things. All the time I'm wondering about the impact of the cube. It's probably because the cube as an object, as a challenge, doesn't need any kind of language. These kind of simple forms and shapes are everywhere. You can find it in religions, you can find it as a very basic uh, knowledge. And the connection for that, it's, 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 it's important, I believe. Could you look over this way, What's up, everyone? It's the Q by Z. What's going on? How are we doing today? All right. Explanation of the one true God with the most played puzzle on the face of the planet, the Rubik's Cube. Today, I'm going to show you what this cube has done to me and how God has spoken to me. We'll bring him into this conversation by saying, I think it's Prince and uh, this is uh, January 28th, 2021, 10.24 p.m. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Tell Aaron and his sons to be grateful or careful for the holy things of the children of Israel. And what is sanctified to me as not to define, defile my holy name? I am the Lord. Say to them throughout your generations, wherever your seed goes near the holy things, the children of Israel sanctify to the Lord while his uncleanliness is upon you. Yes. When we're born, we are a complete cube. Everything is perfect. Our soul is created in heaven. And then God gives us the grace of being born into this world of flesh and sin. We pass through the divine matrix into our vessel of the embryo, which is then fertilized. And you are born to parents, single parent, two parents, they know Jesus, they don't know Jesus. Drug addicts, people who are abusive, people who shouldn't have had children at all. Maybe you're born out of wedlock. Maybe you're, we're almost gonna be aborted. I mean, who knows? But when you're born, you're perfect. And what happens is, is that life starts to uh, come into play. You start to grow up and you start to make choices. As a young child, you make choices where you lie the first time and you slightly turn away from God. And your cube gets messed up. And then as you continue to grow and you're in a household that is destructive, abusive, drugs, alcohol, pornography, more drugs, more pornography, drinking and driving, doing drugs while at work, 
making really bad choices on the weekends, deciding to get in that car and go rob that bank, going down the street and hurting somebody because they cut you off in traffic. And by the time you realize it, your cube and your soul are twisted and mixed up. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 43 quintillion possibilities and color combinations on this 3x3 cube. 43 quintillion, that's the number four and three with 17 zeros. That's a lot of zeros. Almost as there are as many stars in the sky. Now, what's interesting is that even though you're messed up, something happens. If you open your eyes and are willing to look inward on yourself and look for true wisdom, then you find that you come to an interesting place. Somebody says, hey man, you wanna to go to church with me? And you decide to go. Or someone decides to talk to you about Jesus. And you say, hey, that sounds cool. I wanna to, to look into that. So then you go. Or you start talking to them about it. Maybe you actually get the urge to pray for the first time. Then you start talking to other people about Jesus. And then you start making changes in your life where you start to align yourself with what Christ has planned for you. Now there's going to be twists and turns. You're gonna turn right up upside your head. Because once you start to discover the truth, the truth is gonna twist you up. It's gonna make you uncomfortable. You're gonna spin in all kinds of different directions. You're gonna get confused. You're gonna ask questions. You're gonna have doubts and concerns because you're gonna realize that you have to look inward in order to know your true self. And as you do that, you slowly get closer and closer to realize that once you start to put Christ at your center, things start to fall into place. And as they fall into place, you may get twisted up, you may get hurt, someone may die, an accident may happen, you may relapse on those drugs, you may have that drink after you've been sober for quite some time because life just got too fucking hard. And you'll stumble and fall. But the funny thing is, is that the Lord God said, fear not. For I will forgive all of your sins if you trust in me and accept my son as your only savior. And as you align yourself and you start going to church and you start taking stuff out of your life that is evil and corrupt and of the land and of the earth in Satan's kingdom, you realize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And the more you learn, and the more you seek him, the more you discover the truth that's inside you, which is very simple. He is you, you are him. We were created in the image of our one true God. And the best part of it is that when we find our true center in Christ, He speaks to us in ways that we just can't understand. Something compels us to do something. We have to talk to that person. We have to buy that person that coffee. We have to share Jesus with that person. And then we complete our cue again. And our soul and our hearts and our minds are one with Christ in a oneness 
mind, heart, body, soul in the center. And I'll conclude with this. Above us is the sun. God's glory, God's majesty. Above the sun is the heavens, the firmament that separates us from the heavens. God shines his heavenly light through the sun. And below that, the white light is God's light. And God said, let there be light. Let there be Jesus Christ. Let there be Jesus. And let his light shine in the darkest of places and terrify the night. And as it shines on us, it gives us the connection that we need to our one and only Father, who only matters forever and ever. And we must glorify his name. All over the planet is covered in the glorious water that he provides us. I am the living water. We are made up of nearly 75 to 80% of water. And the earth is covered in it. Every morning the sun rises and every evening the sun sets and God gives us one more chance to glorify his name with the 86,600 seconds that we have. In the early morning sun, we get different types of rays from the sun and nourish our bodies in different ways. And we can celebrate his majesty. And then he gives us the glorious paintings at the evening and the sunsets that we so enjoy. Trees, grass, and everything vegetative, uh, vegetative goes on the earth, excuse me. And as they grow, we are reminded of the tree of life and how important it is to us as people. The tree of life is all around us, just like God is. And what makes me happy in all of this is that when you discover all of this is connected and we are all connected as one, we realize that our passion, our love, our hatred, our emotions, and the blood of Christ is what makes us worthy to enter the kingdom of heaven once again. And I hope that you guys are ready and willing to accept that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior because he died on the cross for our sins and that's what bled that day. one true God exists. Forty-three quintillion possibilities. One solved state. Isn't that like turning to Christ? Life gives us so many possibilities and choices and temptations. And if we choose the wrong path, it messes us up. But if we look for God in the right places, we can complete our cube. And we can go home. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've been wanting to put this together for a while. You guys have a good night. Guys, I did.